Please be gentle. We tried our best with the pronunciations. Tomiyano was the envy of his high school classmates, a model student who seemingly had it all. However, his perfect facade concealed a dark side that reared its ugly head in adulthood when he committed the gruesome murder of college student Miyako Hirayoka. But the question that baffled everyone for years was, how did Tomiyano get away with murder? The shocking murder of Miyako Hirayoka and the twisted killer that got away with it. On November 6, 2009, a man picking mushrooms in Mount Garu in Hiroshima, Japan, found more than just capped fungus. Hiding underneath fallen leaves was the decapitated head of a young woman, and it was obvious that she didn't have a quick and painless death. Her head was covered in bruises, and there was a shoe print on her cheek as she stared at him with bloodshot eyes. The shocked mushroom hunter ran down the mountain and immediately called the police. The police searched the mountain for three days, and each day a new body part was found like they were playing a morbid scavenger hunt. On November 7th, a femur was found with all of its flesh sliced off the bone. Then on November 8th, the woman's torso was found. The condition of the torso was so horrible that some of the officers had to step away to throw up. The breasts were cut off and the wounds were so deep that the ribs were exposed. The abdomen was sliced open, drained of blood, and all of the internal organs had been pulled out. The genitalia was so mutilated that it was impossible to determine the sex of the victim at first look. The last body part found was an ankle on November 9th. The autopsy would later reveal that the woman died from strangulation. In this diagram, the body parts in white were never found. Even though the face was severely bruised, one of the officers thought she looked like missing 19-year-old college student Miyako Harayoka, who was reported missing two weeks earlier. Now, the police had two mysteries on their hands. Who murdered Miyako and what kind of monster could do this? The last day of Miyako Hiroyoka. On the day Miyako disappeared, she was working her closing shift at an ice cream shop on October 26, 2009. Her co-worker let her leave early because he knew that she had a mile and a half walk to her dorm in Shimane Prefectural University in Hamada. Her last moments were caught on CCTV. She left work at 9.15 p.m. and it should have been a 30 to 40 minute walk that was a straight path as shown in the map. But Miyako never made it home. Miyako's disappearance was immediately noticed by her mother when she couldn't contact her the next day. This was very unusual for Miyako because she spoke with her family every day and visited them often. But she was also a very busy college student. She regularly volunteered at a group that collected money to fight world hunger as well as helped with an animal charity. But Miyako's mother knew her child and even if Miyako was busy, she would call her. So Miyako's mother called the dorm and what she was told made her blood run cold. Miyako never came home from work. On October 28th, she reported her daughter missing to the police. Two weeks later, she learned the horrible truth. A DNA test confirmed that the body parts found on Mount Garyu was her baby girl. The Investigation Once the remains were positively identified, the Hiroshima and Shimane police formed a joint task force to investigate because the crime happened in two different cities. The police were stumped at the start of the investigation. They didn't find any evidence of a struggle between the shopping plaza and the dorm. So the police speculated that she was kidnapped by an acquaintance. But there was a problem with that theory. Even though she was a cheery person, she was also blunt and her friends said that she spoke her mind and didn't back down if someone was rude to her. Also, it was reported she didn't have any romantic relationships. And it wasn't likely that Miyako took a ride from a stranger because it was a well-known fact that Miyako didn't talk to strangers. At 4 foot 9 and 99 pounds, it wouldn't have been impossible for her to get snatched into a stranger's car. The police questioned workers at the shopping plaza to find any witnesses to Miyako's kidnapping, but no one saw anything unusual except a white sedan believed to be a Toyota Mark II was seen in the employee parking lot for a few hours, but police never located the vehicle. The task force searched the security cameras at three convenience stores that were along Miyako's route to her dorm. The first camera was only a quarter mile from the shopping plaza, but she wasn't seen on that camera or the other convenience store's CCTV. As a result, it was theorized that she was likely kidnapped early into her walk. Using the only clue the task force had, the white sedan, 
the police looked through Japan's end system for any signs of the car. The end system is an extensive camera network that records all vehicle movement throughout Japan and covers almost all major expressways and other strategic locations. They searched through the roads from Shimane to Mount Garyu, where her body was found, on the day of Miyako's disappearance. Soon, the police ran out of leads, so they decided to widen their scope. And yet, after years of investigation, the police were no closer to finding the murderer. A former investigator who wished to remain anonymous said that he believed that expanding the original profile is what prolonged the investigation. He said, Instead of narrowing the picture, the picture of the killer kept getting wider and wider. Because the body had been so expertly dismembered, the investigation was extended to include hunters and medical personnel who were skilled in autopsies. Moreover, since Miss Miyako had participated in an event in which a Russian ship arrived at the port only once, there was even the theory that the murderer was a member of the Russian Special Forces. In a seven-year period, over 3,000 investigators from all over Japan were put on the case, but a suspect was never identified. It's likely that this case would have remained an unsolved mystery until an unusual suspect appeared on the task force radar seven years after the brutal murder. The suspect was 33-year-old Tomiyano. From the outside, he was an upstanding citizen, but when police dug into his background, it revealed a monster. The police never released the reason why he became a suspect, and in the summer of 2016, they began to investigate him. The only thing we do know is that they submitted a review of persons with a history of sexual crime and Tomiyano became the prime suspect. So, what made him an unusual suspect? First, we have to talk about Tomiyano. Tomiyano, the anime protagonist. As a teenager, Yano had everything going for him like he was an anime protagonist. He was a black belt in judo, was the captain of the track team, was the top of his class at a private high school that he attended on a scholarship, and was known for his good looks that he inherited from his mother. Even the neighborhood boys were jealous of him. With all of those positive attributes, you would think he would be the most popular guy in high school, but no, that wasn't the case. Everyone that knew him said there was something off about Tomiyano. He was quiet, very serious, and unpopular. He also had a short temper and would get easily offended. It was just as well because Yano had no interest in the people in his class. When he graduated, he passed the entrance exam to the National Defense Academy, which is the equivalent to West Point in the US, but he decided to attend Kyoshu Institute of Technology by recommendation. And instead of following the path to success, he decided to drop out of college a year later to join a visual kai rock band as a drummer. He was a talented drummer and pianist and played with his band in various clubs for a few years. But things started to go downhill when he had a falling out with the other members and quit the band. Shortly after, his girlfriend, who he wanted to marry, broke up with him. Perhaps most devastating of all for him was his focal dystonia diagnosis in his left arm in 2002. Focal dystonia is a neurological condition that causes involuntary muscle contractions in one part of the body and happens often to musicians. At 28 years old, Yano started attacking women. On three separate occasions in Tokyo in 2004, Yano attacked three women with a knife and sexually assaulted them. He was charged and convicted in August that year of indecent assault and served three and a half years in prison. When his lawyer met him, he said that he couldn't believe that such a quiet and mild-mannered man could commit such disturbing crimes. After completing his prison sentence, he returned to his hometown of Shimonoseki and began working various odd jobs before taking a job as a solar panel salesman in April 2009. His sales territory included Hamada, the city where Miyako went missing. Yano was described as a charming and excellent salesman, and he was quickly promoted to branch manager. But according to his post on the Japanese social media site Mixi, Yano absolutely hated the job. In one post, he wrote, I'm wandering around like a zombie every day looking for a family who wants solar panel systems installed. He posted on Mixi frequently about his life as a drummer, his disability, and his general interests. However, in several of his posts, there were hints of him becoming darker. His profile began with, Warning, I will not reject anyone who comes to me and I will follow anyone who leads me to the ends of hell. 
There were also multiple posts from him that he was looking for a girlfriend and he even went on a date with someone he met on Mixie in October 2009. The woman, who wanted to remain anonymous, said that while he was very talkative through messages, he was quiet and awkward during the actual date. A former co-worker also provided this anecdote about Yano while they were in a company karaoke event. He was sitting alone in the hallway looking tired. He was staring at a point, and it was strange that when girls passed in front of him, he didn't follow them with his eyes like a man his age would. I asked him, don't you have a girlfriend or something? There are no good girls in this town? On one hand, I thought he was very confident, but on the other hand, I got the impression that he was shy and could not speak to girls on his own. So with a background like that, why wasn't he originally a suspect? Well, we'll get to that. With Tomi Yano as the prime suspect, the police zeroed in. On November 22, 2016, the police questioned Yano's younger brother and he gave them an old camera and a thumb drive that belonged to Yano. And at first glance, the camera's memory card and the thumb drive were empty, but a digital forensic investigator was able to recover 57 photos. Those photos were of Miyako, dead. Each photo showed the stage of her dismemberment and was taken within a 90 minute time span. The pictures were taken just before midnight on the night that Miyako disappeared. There were no identifying characteristics of the location of where the dismemberment took place other than a bathtub, so it is suspected that Yano did everything in his house. There were also several photos of a kitchen knife that is believed to be the murder weapon. Tomi Yano was the murderer and it was time to put him behind bars. Only he couldn't be arrested and he never would. That's because Tomi Yano had been dead since November 8, 2009, two days after Miyako's body was found. Yano was driving with his mother when he suddenly slammed into a guardrail and the car exploded, killing them both. However, there are questions surrounding his death. A few days before his death, he told a friend that he'd done something awful, but didn't elaborate on what. And then the day before his death, he asked his boss if he could get the next day off to visit his father's grave with his mother, but there is speculation that he wanted to end his life and took his mother with him. This is assumed because the crash site was nowhere near his father's grave. Furthermore, there are no skid marks to show that he tried to stop before he hit the guardrail. Now we need to go back to the question, why wasn't he a suspect from the beginning? Well, he was a suspect for a brief period of time. Do you remember the end system from earlier? From the very beginning, his car was recorded going through that mountain road. His car was seen multiple times on the day of and a few days after going in weird directions, purposefully going on routes that had the least cameras. His car also matched the color of the sedan witnesses saw in the parking lot near Miyoko's job. Only, his car was a white Toyota Vitz, not a Mark II. He was also dinged in the first review because of his sexual assaults. But because he died two days after Miyoko was found, he was dismissed from being a suspect. We will never know what happened to Zachary on the day Miyako went missing. Police have theorized the following. Miyako was walking along her route when she was spotted by Yano and pulled into the car with the intent to assault her. With Miyako's personality, she likely fought back, which would have angered Yano. Because he had a short temper, he beat her, strangled her to death, then took Miyako's body back to his home to dismember it. And with that, the police closed the case. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. Do you think this was Yano's first murder? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, we have another Japanese true crime about a serial killer that worked as a plus-size hostess club. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us with YouTube.